Hey YouTube, it's me, Jen, your Pudgy Picker. And Kim. And welcome to our podcast, Two Sisters, One Booth. And this is a podcast to talk about very specific items and interesting things about having a booth. And today's topic, Kimberly, what is it? Why you should not have a booth. So we're here to talk you out of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't do it. <laughs> Run fast away. Yeah. So we're, you know, we when we set out to do this podcast, we want to be completely honest and just lay it out on the line. And we're going to tell you some things you consider should consider if you're if you're thinking about a booth, and you got to be honest with yourself on certain aspects and make that decision with all the information and. Uh, make an educated decision. So I guess uh, when we both started talking about this and deciding how we wanted to discuss it, a big thing that came up was time. Oh, yeah. Do you have the time? Never have enough time. <sighs> I know. So time would include time to source, time to go out and buy things for the space. Um... Do you have time to straighten? Yeah, you have to have time to work your booth. Yeah, that's that's important because a lot of people say, oh, I have time to source. I'm going to go in there. I'm going to throw it on the shelves and I'm all done. But we know that you need to straighten and rearrange merchandise to keep the booth fresh. And that is a certain amount of time. Yeah, I mean, time is a, a huge element in so many other ways. It's not just a physical going there to do time but if you want to keep relevant with what's selling and what's not selling uh, you have to take the time to do that you have to take the time to research the items to see if you can go in and work the store or be there when the items are going in and out you can get educated even if you're recycling stuff take the time to educate yourself is this a style that's still going is this a color that's still accepted yep. so time covers a, a lot of a lot of things also uh we do this even regularly is take time to walk through the mall yep you need to look at what other people are selling Yep. Look for ideas, maybe, of how they have things arranged. Check their prices, yep. um, how things are running that way. So that is an investment into your job, is to walk around. Now, if you're walking around and you're buying lots of stuff. <laughs> That's a no, no. But we've That's always, a problem. We've always said, as long as we leave with less than we took in, we're doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, yep, you're going in the right direction, for yeah. sure. So that is something that also takes amount of time rearranging things as we said um driving to the mall yep if you live an unreasonable amount uh a distance from the mall uh to make your work days if you have any work days or doing this maintenance uh that could be tough and i'm I almost guess, there no <laughs> i was gonna say and when i say an unreasonable amount of time what yeah. what does the average person, what would you, Kim, consider an, uh, an unreasonable amount of time? About two minutes more than what I'm driving <laughs> right now. <laughs> I mean, I can get there, if the traffic's good and I hit all the lights real good, I can usually get there in about 22 minutes. Okay. So that's okay. If it were a half hour or more, that would be more difficult to do. Yeah, well, when we first started our uh, our first space in the previous mall, um, Kim lived maybe... So I could get there in seven minutes. I was going to say it was probably more than five, so yep. seven, minutes. seven minutes. And at the time, I lived closer than I do now. And when I started, when we started there, I was... You were probably about 14 or 15. Yeah. I know I could get to your house about the same length of time, take me the other way. Yeah, so 14, 15 minutes. Then I ended up moving further away uh, from our booth and I was 25 minutes. Yep. So we occasionally it's probably 22, but you drive faster no. than me. <laughs> oh, listen to that. Well, everybody drives faster than you. Oh. So but when we fun. occasionally go out there to the, to our old mall, they have, um, that's where I do my auctions, mainly where I have my auction halls. So yeah, that's a little bit of a distance. Um, and if you, you know, you want to keep up, you know, being out there and, 
you know, getting your stuff done and being there regularly. When you go out, you know, to restock and straighten or whatever, that's something that has to be done regularly. So I would say probably 20, 25 minutes, maybe 30. Yeah. That would be stretching it. it. We know a lot of people who I drive much that. further than yeah. that. Yeah. Now, in our old space, remember the half space I had? Um, I don't know if this is still true, but the people who have that space, they live in Pittsburgh. Yep. Now, you're talking, what, two and a half hours? That's, that's a drive. And the one is from New, uh, New York, and she has uh, another space somewhere else in New York. And then she drives all the way in here. And, you know, granted, it's in the corner of New York, but still, that's two states over from that's us. That's a decent trek, yeah. So, I mean, you've got to have enough booths. She has more than one booth in each one, I'm sure. Yeah. So when she goes, she goes and spends the day, you know, like half her week here, half her yeah. week there. But that that's that's got to be crazy. I can't see that. You know, and it's not like when you get there, oh, I forgot something. Let me <laughs> run home or I'll come back tomorrow. You can't do that. Yeah, but she has one of those great big panel trucks, too. One of those great big things. So I'm sure she's probably got yeah everything but a kitchenette in the back of that thing. And I know the one thing. that we're talking about from, from Pittsburgh, if that's still where they live, they're usually at the auction. So I think they come in, work the booth for the day, stay for the auction. You would but, have to. You have to. Because that's... you are a business person, you have to keep track of your time. Time's money. So that would make sense to do all of those things in one round trip. You just think that there would be something closer to them that would be, you know, a place where they could have a booth. I don't know. It all depends. Um, some people say, like now with us, we have two places, our previous place and the place we're at now. Yeah. I mean, how many people have even one that's in a reasonable distance, let well, alone two. I was going to say, the other ones that I can think of that I know of that are in the state are at the absolute minimum over an hour away. I know there's one probably beef. There's several huge ones, maybe 10 to 15 minutes or a little more uh, before you get to Columbus. That's why I'm I saying. I mean, they're huge. Yeah, you can see them from the freeway. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, they look like warehouses. Yeah, that would be fun to go yeah. and look around. So, I mean, that's, you know... We can't even get through our store in four hours if you look really good. Can you imagine going someplace <laughs> like that? We'd have to spend a week there just to get through <laughs> everything. You know, so that, it's just, it's one of those things that when I say an unreasonable amount, you have to decide Yes. what is an unreasonable amount. Some people could, I mean, you know, my husband's from Pennsylvania, Mr. Pudgy Picker, and he... People from Pennsylvania don't think nothing of driving an hour, hour and a half to go to a restaurant. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, what your unreasonable and my unreasonable might be two different, you know, lengths of time. But you need to take that into consideration when you're looking at being in this place. You know, if you're if it's a half an hour away, that's an hour of driving each time you go out there. Is yeah. that is that worth it? Are you making the money where that's going to be uh, reasonable? I mean, gas is not cheap in summer. When it's slow time everywhere, I mean, gas, is, gas prices go up. So you have to take all that into consideration, wear and tear on your car. So your time is worth a lot. And I think a lot of people just kind of discount. We were just talking about this a few minutes ago. You kind of just discount what your time is. And your time, at least pay yourself minimum wage and look at what you're doing and say, is this worth my time? Yep. So absolutely, time is a big factor. Uh, next item we're going to talk about is money. Yes. I just said to you a little bit ago in Chit Chat, I said, uh, you have to spend money to make money. Yep. So you have to have money to be able to go out and make purchases of the items in order to have them to resell. So how much money do you have? How much can you afford to put out knowing that maybe some of that money isn't going to be an immediate return? And if you think about when you're first starting something up, there are going to be certain expenses. Um, if you don't have pieces to use for display, yep. there's a certain amount of money you're going to have to put out, even if you buy stuff used, that you're going to have to, that initial output plus, yeah. you know, paying for your rent 
to get the space and then to move in, or if you're going to paint, if you're going to add shelves. <laughs> Unless you get paint cheap. <laughs> oh my gosh, she, she will not let go. I will not let go of, of my the poop paint. green. You know, somebody made a comment not too long ago about that. They <laughs> said that their booth was a poop. Was baby poop on crack? Oh, oh that's, that's what I forget who said that. If you're out there listening, yeah. 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 And I'm yeah. like, oh. wow. So yeah. So in fact, when I was at Lowe's the other day, <laughs> I asked if they had any boo boo paint, and she looked at me and I said, you know, mist tints. She's like, oh, over there. So I didn't see anything interesting, but I always look. I do too. I know. Well, you I have to remember, I bought that stuff because we were remodeling the basement over here, so I could move in. So I was looking for something to stick on the drywall that would absorb before I painted the colors on. So it was cheaper than buying real paint. Yeah. So I didn't care necessarily what color it was. And that was just an extra can. Oof. <laughs> it was terrible. That's why it was a mist tint. Oh, and nobody goodness. else liked it either. Well, when I saw it, I was kind of like, eh. And then when it went on the walls, I was like, ooh. <laughs> but we were already pretty much doing it. I'm like, at this point, there's no looking it back. It looked great after we were done. I'm fine. <sighs> great. <laughs> Anyway, so money. So you have that initial startup cost, um, you know, to get the get the booth, to get it open, and you want to make a good start. You got to have a certain amount of product ready to go to put in. You know, you you paid for the space, you get all your display stuff up, and in most, you need stuff up there. <laughs> and in most cases, your the business you're working with is going to more than likely require that you use a standard sticker. <clears throat> for pricing and such, so mm -hmm. you're going to have to, you know, that's a that's more money you're going to have to put out to purchase those type of items to price your items. Yeah, so you know that's why you got to be completely familiar, uh, like we talked about with the you know the mall rules, uh, that kind of stuff. That's that is a cost, and you may think, oh well, that's not that much, but if you're just starting <laughs> out, that <laughs> adds a lot up. Of stickers. Yeah, so yeah. and I think ours are. <clears throat> How many are on there? Ooh, I don't know. Maybe 50? And I think they're 55 cents a sheet. Yeah. So usually when I get my, my stickers, I get 10 sheets at a time. Mm -hmm. So that's usually what See, I do. So it's 550. It, yeah. I do it for the easy math. That's yeah. the only reason I do it that way. But then that's how you do that, though, because you, again, when you're talking about money, you've got to figure out how much you put into the item, how much if you had to put extra time into it, like if it's furniture, repainting, refinishing, whatever. Yep. And you have to think of, if you do the gas mileage and everything ahead of time, and then the price to put in there that for sticker prices for each item, and all of that we'll cover, I'm sure, in another podcast about how to price your item. Yep. And so you have to know, you're putting out money for stickers. So initially, to maybe even cut down on that cost, and a lot of reasons, a lot, one of the reasons why people start uh, to have a booth is they have a lot of their own items that they're looking to sell. A lot of their own crap. Yeah. I mean, their own inventory. <laughs> Good stuff people can't live without. Yes, us. that's, yeah. So, yeah, if you initially have a certain amount of items that you can use as display pieces or to sell, that's going to cut down on your mm -hmm. cost for sure. So you need to tell yourself, do I have the money to start this venture. Um, and if it's something that you have a couple months to get, really get set up on, then you can start building your inventory. Um, I know that we had to wait, uh, let's see, June, July, August, September, three to four months before we got into our next space. And when we closed our other booth, we marked everything down. I would say we took, I took maybe less than 5% items I took out that were for sale and yeah. the rest I said I don't want to take this stuff I want to start fresh yep, the last week we were down to 90% off on it 90% off yep just to finish getting rid of it so we didn't have to load it up and haul it out of there yeah and I wanted to make a fresh start fresh items and being able to source over the summer that was garage sale season. It worked out really nice. So, mm -hmm. but there's that certain outlay of cash that you have uh, to consider. Yeah. See, and those two run consecutively in, a, in another area, too, with time and money, is you have to be reasonable in knowing that when you first start up any business adventure, it's going to take you a little while to get up and running. Yep. So you're going you're gonna to have to accept that you may end up putting out a little more on rent because you're not... It's possible, not impossible, but possible you may not be able to make your rent at first 
for the first month or close on the second. So are you going to have the money to keep that up and running till yeah. you get it fully stocked and figure it out? That's true. So if you if you figure, I would say, two to three months yeah. of what your rent is going to be, that's important because yeah. you don't want to get in there and then blow all your money to try and get in inventory in there and then rent comes due and uh-oh. Yeah, <laughs> so, that's not good. Yeah, so, I mean, these are all things that you need to take in consideration before you make that decision to do it. Because I know a lot of people come in and uh, I've had people come in and say, oh, wow, I'd love a booth here and blah, blah, blah. You know, when you're thinking about it, you're thinking of the money and all the fun it's going to be. And, you know, you have to stop and count the cost first to make sure. Yes. So we talked about time. We talked about money. Um, something else we consider um, is your health. Oh, speaking of that. No. <laughs> my aching back. <laughs> oh, my hip. So think about it this way. You are buying and sourcing that's a lot of time. That's a lot of wear and tear on your body. That's carrying stuff in and put it in your car. You have to lug it into the house, recondition it, do what you're going to do to it, price it, put it in your car, lug it into the store. That's that's a lot of hard work. Hanging up stuff up and down off ladders to hang up nails or hang up pieces high. Being down on your knees so you can get down on the... <laughs> yep. <laughs> I look at her and laugh because we're both... Whenever we drop something, we kind of just look at each other like... Who's closer? So, I mean, you have to consider that. We have a vendor today, I was just telling Kim about, that I spoke to. She's almost 80. She's doing much better now, but she battled uh, a serious illness for a while. And she was telling me today, she's like, her husband and her have the booth. And she's like, we can't really do furniture anymore. It's too much. I used to be able to help him load it in the car or and she's like I just can't do it anymore it's just it's too much for us yeah so you know that's something you have to think about um you know we're not trying to talk you out of all these things but the point is it is a cost there is a wear and tear in your body do you have the energy and strength to lug things to source to stock etc yeah. so that is something you really do have to consider well and then you know as once again, depends on the type of mall you're in. But with ours, we have a commitment to to work. Yep. So, you know, are you able to do any of the jobs that would be a requirement? Uh, there's a number of jobs available for us. Cashier, that means you're standing for the majority of the day. Um, customer service, okay, you can sit down a little bit more there. The person that's in the back watching the doors and that can sit more. But then the other people, they're running the store. They're helping the customers. They're climbing up and getting things down for them. They're carrying stuff to the front. Yeah, you're walking, so you're taking items from customers, carrying them up front. Uh, we have wrappers. So uh, when a person comes up with a claim ticket, um, you go over, you get all their items off the shelf. Could be heavier items. Could be a bunch of small stuff. Yes. And then whatever is fragile, you uh, can box it or put it in bags. Oh, delay. Sorry. And, yeah, sometimes we have to call, you know, a walker. Yes. Can a walker come up front so we can load furniture? So yes. there is a certain amount of, you know, strenuous. Yes. Plus we have, um, normally have a greeter, someone to say hi. Mm -hmm. Have you been here before? If they say no... You tell them a quick, basic, here's what's going on, here's how it works. Here's the bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom, <laughs> the furniture room, the cafe, important stuff. Yes, the bathroom. Um, and we have over 100 vendors, but there's one central checkout, yeah. you know, and if you need any help, find somebody with a name tag. And if they say, yes, I've been here before, you say, you know, welcome back. Yep. And also something that they do. Uh, is they have a notebook and they have times increments of a half an hour and you're actually marking people as they come in because there's certain days they want to figure out you know what the traffic flow is mm -hmm. and they can figure that out by people coming in the door as well as the register hour to hour they can tell you how much went through the registers yep so and, and what else some hours it's a lot yeah <laughs> so these are i mean there's some people that they either can't, they don't think they can handle it or they don't want yeah. the responsibility of being on a register. There are certain people who are. I don't on know a, anybody like that, do uh, I? <laughs> she sighs. I tried it, <laughs> but I, yeah. 
So, well, I'm just thinking, because like with our place, it's not too bad. A lot of the older ones, um, they can switch off. Maybe they, they're able to walk around for a little while, but then they need to take a break for an hour or two. They can switch off with other people that are doing other jobs that mm -hmm. are sitting for a while and then walk for a while. And so, you know, if they're able to work with you like that at the malls, then that, that would be something that you'd still be able to control. But it's, it takes a, it's, a, and pull. even if you're there or you're sitting, your mind is still busy. It is still tiring. We open at 10. We have to, you have to be there a quarter till for a, quick meeting in the morning and at six the store closes then everyone has a chore to do afterwards so it's it can be a very long day yes and uh i know when i've been a rapper up front um if it's a slow day and one of the you know one of the walkers comes over and says oh my knees hurt and i'm like do you want to rap for a little bit i'll go walk around so it's i think everybody's real accommodating as far as tag teaming yes. you know if you need that so but that is a certain amount of energy, and if you have a full-time job and you're going to be doing this on the side, you're going to have to work a day on the weekend, or two days. If you have, like in our space, we have a single space, we have to work two days. There's two of us, so that makes it easy, but there are people who have two and three or four booths, yes. and that's, I mean, you're working eight days a month, so I mean, you could be up there a lot. So that's something that needs to be considered. You know, do you have the energy and the health to do that? Or in the our time. mall, yeah, you can pay or someone. Or the money to yeah, pay you back can pay the someone to work your day. It's not cheap. No. And being a cheap it's, skate, I don't want to yeah. <laughs> I don't want to do the, that. For the person that is getting paid to take your spot to work for you for the day, it's not enough money, but for the person having to put it out of pocket for one day, it's a lot of money. Yeah, because you have to consider that. How much am I making? Am I willing to? It's what, like forty five dollars? Yeah, forty. I think it's forty or forty. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's. You know, and there are a lot of vendors who are looking for extra money because they're retired or whatever. But you know, that's something that you know you can do. I've done it once in a while. But it's not something I yeah. would do regularly, certainly. I don't think I've done that up at the new spot. I've done it a number of times at the other spot. I think it was cheaper at the other place, but they yeah. weren't. Op they were open till five, not till six. So I don't know. It seemed like it was a bit cheaper. But well, the thing is, too, depending on how many people you have, we in our old space we had at one point we had a double space. So if you have a single space, you have to work two days. If you had an additional space, you only had to work one. Because we had a lot more vendors there. Our old mall is twice the size of our new of the newer place. Literally. Yeah. Exactly so twice. now if we had a, a double space, we'd have to work four days. Because yeah. there's just not enough well, people to give you. Well, and that changed, too, with the other one at the end, if you remember. Well, that's, that's, that's another story. Other, but that's still, story. that was yeah. still four days. Yeah. So, I mean, you have to consider that. You know, is your health... Your time, is it worth your time to be, you know, you have to be up there. Or uh, there are certain malls or booths where you don't have to work, but the rent yeah. is much higher. So you essentially go in, restock, straighten up, and you're done. See, I just, I, well, and there's some that you just drop the stuff off at the desk, and then they put it out and really? tend to it. Oh, but I see, couldn't do I that. know. No. I don't want anybody I, we're else. We're too much of control freaks to yeah. do that. Because <laughs> if I went in there and didn't like what you did with it, I'd be rearranging and whatever. Well, at that point, you don't really have an individual space. No. You just have yep. the whole mall, and okay, we're going to decide where we're going to put your stuff. Yep. That's weird. It's sort of sort of consignment y but I just don't yeah. think I'd like that. No. Yeah. We're too much of control freaks yep. for that. Don't touch <laughs> my stuff. All. Unless you're gonna buy it. Then yeah. you can touch it. And then you can touch it. All <laughs> Take it home and touch Finger it. Fingerprint it to pieces. So um another uh aspect of this that has to be considered is if you have awesome stuff, you source awesome, you are great with pricing you're great with staging, but you can't stand people. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want you there. Yeah, if you're an Oscar the Grouch, <laughs> stay in your garbage can. Yes, right. We don't want you there. Yeah, and there there are people that we have known in both places that our are borderline. Personality-wise, they're, yeah. they're kindness-challenged. 
<laughs> okay. You like that? Write that down kindness somewhere. Kindness challenge. Kind, kindness challenge. But yeah. the point is, if you don't like people, you don't get along with people, you don't want to be around people, you got to consider that because yep. you are going to be talking other vendors, you're going to be talking to customers. When you're working, you have to, you know, you got to be nice. Well, so. I mean, how many times it's brought up in the meetings at both places. It's brought up <laughs> how many times people go in to stock their booths or whatever. And it's like, I'm not working. I'm not talking to anybody. I am not going to help anyone who needs oh, help. That I'm not work. answering it work that any way. questions. Yeah. But that's not how it's supposed to work. No. So you don't belong there because obviously you don't like people and you don't want to. I just, I asked a lady today, we were stalking. Usually you're supposed to wear your name tags when you're, and I never I always I, forget. But yeah. I was standing there and a lady went by and she had one, a huge, like enamelware, like coffee pot, like you'd put over a fire. Yes. And she had something else in her hand. And I said, I said, oh, would, would you like me to take that up front for you so you don't have to carry it? And she's like, no, I'm almost done. And I said, okay, well, if you, need, if you need any of us, just, you know, flag us down. We'd love to help you. So she walked down, and then um, Robin was walking up, and she said, oh, can I take that up front for you? Like, <laughs> literally, like, 30 seconds after I did, and I leaned around the corner, and I said, I already asked her. And I said, aren't we helpful? And she just laughed. So, I mean. That bothers some people when they're shopping. Every time I turn around, somebody's standing around to take my stuff. Well, you know what? That's not only a matter of being nice and being kind and being helpful, that is also a theft deterrent. Yes, it is. If we're going to come over, hi, how you doing? You know, if you're going to steal something, you don't, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to <laughs> smile. I want to tell you how my day was. You know, I want to just be unnoticed and left alone. And that's... Like it stuff my pockets. Yeah, and... so that is definitely something we do. That is definitely yeah. a theft deterrent. And it just, you know, you've got to give everybody their warm fuzzies. <laughs> So, we've talked about things if you don't enjoy. If you don't enjoy people or the public. If you don't enjoy sourcing for inventory. You know, that's that's the most fun part of the job, really. That's, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. So That's why I have boxes of stuff to go in the <laughs> other room that haven't been touched yet. So, I mean, there, uh, do you think there's a human? Is there anyone out there listening that doesn't like to source? I don't know. Who are you people? Why are you listening? <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> do you have no business listening? Yeah, why, this? Are, why are you still here? Yes. But, yeah, that's that's a fun part. Maybe somebody doesn't like... And it, if if you don't have a lot of time in garage selling, that takes a certain amount of time. If you go into a thrift store, you got a lot of stuff under one roof, you know, it's going to be a little easier. But it's funny, I told I told Mr. Pudgy Picker the other day, I said... We went to 25 garage sales. I said, I got in and out of my car over 50 times today. I was going to say, because, yeah, yeah, garage sales sound like fun, and if you hit a couple, that's great, or you hit a community sale, yeah, that street makes sale. it easier. Absolutely. But if you're moving your vehicle each time, yep. and it's hot, and you're getting in, your car doesn't have time to cool off. Yep. Oh, yeah, it is not, that is not an easy thing to do. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, that's, you know. what What is your record? Come on, spit it out. Oh, last summer, I believe it was 54. 50, so it's 108. That's right. <laughs> Ooh, I'm tired. Just, and, of course, it was probably August, where it was probably 110 yeah. degrees in the shade. Yeah. I think my yeah. pants were loose at the end of the day. <laughs> I was going to say, <laughs> that's like when I'd be in Disney in Florida, I'd. I came back laying, weighing less than when I went because you walk and you sweat and you yeah. don't want to eat because you're hot. Yeah. yeah, so that's, I mean, that's sourcing, of course. It's takes hard time, work. takes money. There's that stamina takes there. Health, that health. And if you don't enjoy it. So um, if you don't enjoy maintaining or setting up the space, I mean, that was a lot of fun, too. It's a lot of work, but we love doing that. We love going in and rearranging and making things look pretty. Um, you know, if you like getting the stuff and taking it in, but you don't enjoy the, the staging part of it. Well, that's kind of in my blood. Cause if you remember over the many, many oh years, my gosh. <laughs> I know where you're going with this. You do? <laughs> yes. I know exactly where you're going. I, um, I get 
used to, I'm a little bit better about it now, but get bored with my living room or my furniture or my, so yeah, my kids would come in from school and it's like, hey, whoa, what'd you do? So I'm always moving and rearranging. See, we shared when we were, <laughs> see, my, my parents had, I mean, literally less than a thousand square foot house. It's a 907 square feet. There you Thank go. You. And there were five of us kids. So the girls got one room and she would rearrange. I mean, I'd come in and like trip over the bed, you know. So, I mean, that's something she liked to do. <laughs> So, see, so, I was set up for this kind of work. All you were you were made That's to right. be a reseller. That's now, right. if you sell on eBay, um, you don't have to worry about that. You no. list it, you store it, you don't have to stage it, you don't have to move it around. You don't. So, there's a certain amount of that that you don't have to deal with on eBay. But you know, you want the our, we want our spaces to look appealing, to look fresh, uh, to look like there's new and interesting things. And that takes a certain amount of time and energy, and you have to kind of like it to do it. Um, yeah. Let's see, what else? So maintaining the space, keeping the booth fresh. If you're not a team player, I mean, if you don't really, it's not even just people in general. It's you deal with a lot of vendors. You know, you help them. They help you. Um, since we are a co-op type of situation, uh, the people that are there working are not employees. So we're all helping each other. We're all making the business a success. So if you're not a team player, like I said, I'm in my booth. I'm restocking. I don't help customers. I don't help nobody. I'm in here to help myself. I signed up for this job, and this is all I'm doing. Don't ask me to do anything else. Don't ask for my help. Yep. So you sign up for yep. a certain job when you come in to work that job, like on your work days, and something changed or they had to move it around, are you flexible enough to say, yeah, yeah cause I know Kim and I are both whenever, um, one of the owners of the store say there's been a change in plans. Could you work this area? Could you switch off with so-and-so? Could you do half here and half there? We always say wherever you want yeah. us. So I say, put me where you need me. It doesn't, it doesn't matter to me. I'm just here for you right now. So, yeah, are you are you flexible where you can kind of shift gears? Team player. Yeah, yeah. So that, that is something you need to consider. Um, when I was getting this information ready and making my notes, <clears throat> it was one of my work days, and I worked up at the front desk, and all the people who were walking or, or any of the vendors who were there to restock stop over to buy tickets to need a, a key for a locked case. And I would say to them, when you got a minute, I have a question for you. <laughs> so I would say, why should you not have a booth? And I was jotting down notes. So a lot of the vendors helped me uh, with this information. And we're going to do another one that is why you should have a booth. But there was two awesome, awesome things that came up that I jotted down. One of them is, you are an impulsive spender. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the best customers in our mall are other vendors. Yes. So if you're a walker and you're walking around the entire day, you're going to find stuff you want to buy. Oh, yes. <laughs> so. Some buy them to, to resell. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But a lot of that goes out the door. Yep. That's so you sure. need to think about that. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're an impulsive spender or you see all kinds of stuff you like, I mean, you're there essentially to make money, not be spending more than you're making. So that's something definitely to consider. Um, the other one was somebody said, uh, you shouldn't have a, a booth if you want predictable income. That's true. So in, in resellers, whether you're on eBay or you have a space or whatever venue you're selling on, there's slow times. Oh, yeah. Like now. <laughs> The summer slump, as we call it. Yes. So there's times you're going to be, you know, you're going to be making money hand over fist. And there's other times you're just going to be, you know, hand and fist. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you're, there's times it's yep. going to be skinny living. So yeah. you need to, I mean, if you work a job, you know how many hours you work. You know how much money they take out for taxes, etc. You know what your paycheck's going to be. In this business, you don't really have that luxury. Nope. There's not a certain amount you can say, oh, I always make this certain amount every paycheck. 
It just doesn't happen. Uh, yeah, I happen. don't think anybody can say that. So, yeah, that's that's something you definitely need to consider. You know, well, and like, you're not going to make millions of dollars either. People are like, this is really great stuff. It's awesome. I'm going to put it in there. It's going to fly out the door. Yep. Eh. <laughs> yeah. Nope. So, I mean, if How you're looking to be a millionaire, we, <laughs> yeah. How many times do we take, oh, this is so cute. Oh, this is so awesome. And then months later, it's like, nobody what? Nobody wants. <laughs> we're even, oh. we were, we had stuff we had marked down. And then we said, if it doesn't sell, we're going to just, we're going to get rid of the duds. And almost every item we picked up, we're looking at each other going, this Aww. is so cute. Why oh, didn't anybody like want it? it? <laughs> so that's why we bought it. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then there's other items you're like, well, I don't think anybody's really going to want this. Ah, what the heck, I'll take it. <laughs> it goes. A, a metal goose, maybe? <laughs> oh, that's, you know me and my stories. I have so many projects at home. I had, I had this metal goose, and he was probably a foot and a half tall, and it was like a metal. Meshy wire. Like, yeah, like a metal shape. And then it had thinner wire, like, wrapped around its body and its beak and everything. So it was you could like, still see through it and yeah, everything. Yeah, and it but... was painted white. It was getting rusty. It was coming apart. And I thought, you know what? I could fix this. I could spend the time. No, I have enough. <laughs> I got it at a garage sale so cheap. And I had it on my porch forever. I mean, I even had a scarf. I had a winter scarf for it. <laughs> I had a ribbon for summer. And I said, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get rid of it. It's not really nice enough to donate. I'm gonna put it by the garbage can, but I'm not gonna put it in because I know somebody will come by and adopt him. So I was thinking, it's metal. Somebody might even scrap it. So the other day, last week, <laughs> we we came in and, and one of the vendors stopped us. Remember, was talking to us about eBay. Mm -hmm. So we were standing there talking, and my eyes go up, and I'm looking. This is the booth right next to us. And I look, and I see my goose. <laughs> He's up on the display. Still got the scarf around his neck. And I just stopped the vendor today when we were there, and I said, I said, you got something of mine in your booth. And he just kind of looked at me, and then I told him the story. And he's like, no, that must have been his partner. She, she finds stuff. So... They were out looking around and dumpster diving, and in my neighborhood, she doesn't live that far from me. I learned, and Didn't she found that said that is so cute, <clears throat> and she put eight bucks on it, and it's in their booth. And <laughs> I'm not mad; I'm just funny. And I told her, I says, I don't think it's a goose; I think it's a homing pigeon because it's like finding its way back to me. And I said, Yeah, I told her, and she's like, Really? Where do you live? So we talked about that, but. That was funny, because your eye catches it, and for a minute, your brain's yeah. going, what? That's not where I normally see it, that. You hear that one man's trash is another's treasure, and that's, it shows yeah. exactly what it is. And the, the stuff he has in his yeah. booth if is you saw so... One, if yeah. you took one thing out and set it by a trash can, you'd go, that has definitely got to go with the trash can. Yeah. You, you'd pick out one thing at a time, it's like, oh, that is just a piece of garbage. But he has a knack. Yeah. And you go by his booth and you're just standing there and all going, I would have never thought of that. Yeah. So his yeah. It literally one by one, each piece can look like not everything, but a lot of it just, looks like trash. Wow. Awesome stuff. But man, stuff. by the time he, he gets had, done. He even had like, you know how they have the commercial <laughs> mixers oh, I was say. and they have the big, huge blades. If you don't know what I'm talking about, type in, you know, commercial mixer. The blades are huge. He wired them with a light bulb, and they're yep. like and a they're hanging, hanging light. They're hanging, yeah, from a box spring from a ma from a mattress that's nothing but the box spring, yeah, which is supported in the air by columns, you know, just like you'd use on your porch or whatever. Which and in concept is like what? Yeah, but that's how he has it set up, and it looks. Awesome. Yeah, it's crazy the stuff he has. Because yeah. I keep telling I him, I I'm like, his I said, one of these days I'm going to follow you around for a week and just see where, oh, what you get and how you make it and what you do. I mean, he's just got some real eclectic, oh, yes. weird, awesome stuff. I don't know awesome where he gets stuff. half of that stuff, but yeah. it's, he knows Well, I know where stuff. he got one thing. <laughs> <laughs> he knows his junk. So, yeah, I mean, when you like you said, when you see it in the context of the booth, 
And he has a double space right next to us. Yep. And it's just awesome stuff. He has one thing in there now I would love to have. Which one was is that? that? It's against the wall that's our other side of the wall. It's a vintage mirror from a dresser that has two smaller panes, one on each side and a yeah. bigger. And then he bought, he got driftwood. Yeah. And just the way that he got the just the right pieces at the right angles and the right everything and outlined yeah. that. Oh, I would I mean, he has pieces that. of driftwood that I don't even know how he got them up there. <laughs> he has them leaning against the wall and they're probably eight, nine feet. I was going to say, you know how they t- yeah. they deliver po- phone poles on a... That's probably how he got it there because some of them I mean, are just huge. really strange, awesome. Yeah. I mean, he had one chair that was like a whitewashed pink or something and it looked like a throne <laughs> i'm like holy cow where do you get yeah. this stuff yeah well he's got one of those great big uh, sand uh pool like for a great big uh pool it's the sand filter and he's got the front of it cut open and he's got stuff sitting in it it's like yeah. what? what yeah just i mean i would love to get in his head yeah i mean it's a scary place <laughs> but i would have so much fun there Wee. So, I mean, you know, it's so cool, like, you know, any How of us. we get on there? I have anyway. no idea. But it's so cool to see the personalities yes. of the vendors in their space. And just some of them you walk by and you're like, ooh, and others you're like, holy cow, that's, yes. I just want to stand here and look at every single thing. Yes. And that's in his booth. It's, that's one of I need to stand here because I don't yeah. want to miss anything. Yep. So, stuff. yeah. So, that's. That's basically what we wanted to cover. Can you think of anything else? Oh, I think we did a really good job. <laughs> <sighs> Along with our few stories today. Yeah. This is, we have to do, this is story time oh by gosh. Jen and Kim. Every, every, <laughs> almost every video, especially when I go garage sale and I have stories. <laughs> so I tell people, I got a story because you know I have stories. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's part of the reason I do this job is... The, the interesting people and the interesting places and the different personalities and funny things that happen. It's just, yes. it's so cool. It's so, it's serendipity how how this business is. And I think that's why we do well at it, because we love it so much. I'm an eclectic spirit. Yeah. I'm eclectic in so my that means design. Nothing, my, so that means nothing matches. That's <laughs> it. Because I'm scatterbrained, but we're going to go with eclectic. Eclectic. That's a, that's a, or a, uh, what's the other word? If you're really rich, but you're. Eccentric? Eccentric, yes. Yeah. So you have weird taste, but if you're, if you're rich, you know, if you're poor and you have, you know, you're really strange, you're just a weirdo. Strange. <laughs> <laughs> but if you got money, then, you know. Yeah, but that's, that's what makes this fun is because I have so many interests over so many things in life in general um and difference in style of furniture and and everything that it this fascinates me from one booth to the next well and when you live more than a few decades into your adulthood you have more and what are you, you saying have more error, you have more things to draw <laughs> what from are you saying <laughs> you're old no. <laughs> that, yeah I'm so i mean there. you see you know you see stuff oh i had that as a kid or i mean so you get more you know, you have more experience with things. Because I know we'll go to the auction or something and you'll say, oh, I used to love that style of furniture. Oh, I used to really want to have this or that. And, you know, so you see the different uh, different stages of life that, you know, you if, you, if you're if you drawn to it, then you know somebody else out there is going to want I to love buy to, it. And I love to hear people in the store stop and go, oh, my gosh, look Aunt so and so used to have one of these, and I always loved that thing. Or you know those kind of yeah. comments. It's so much fun because it is a real emotional connection you have yep. right there. In yeah, that we've moment talked time. about that before. You know, and there's really nothing you need or no. have to have no. at our mall. It is that emotional, you know, connection to stuff yep. and things that it reminds you of and people that it reminds you of. And that's, mm-hmm. that's awesome. Times in your that's, life. That's and... awesome to bridge that gap and to put something in somebody's hand yep. that they never thought they would have again or never had, but always wanted. Yes. It's, it's part of the business that we enjoy so very much. Yes, definitely. So I guess that's all we have for this time. It's all this week. Bye-bye. <sighs> And you didn't even you what? didn't even like rat me out on us. Shall doing I this. start? <laughs>
<laughs> okay, let me tell you exactly what it is. You didn't rat me out on, have we covered this topic before? I don't know. It's kind of deja vu to me. Oh. And why is that, Kimberly? Why is Well, it? because my dear sister kept looking at the thing going, oh, I hope I got enough juice in my batteries here. And I didn't charge it. I didn't charge it. And guess, and guess what, what? happened? <laughs> she didn't charge it. And it died halfway through. And we didn't know it last time until so it was all just over. Yapped and talked to ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> well, what's new? We do that all the time anyway. No, even if we're if I'm by yes. myself, I just yap and yap. Oh, and I have yap. some of the best conversations with myself. You're just so <laughs> smart. You just I have know. to confer with. And yourself. I am hilarious. You just don't know how funny I am. <laughs> I crack myself up. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, one so more yes. story before we close. Okay. <laughs> okay. I, uh, uh, for our, my anniversary with Mr. Pudgy Picker, I got, uh, this past October, I got two dash cams. And they were close to $50 each. And I told my son, I've had them, we've had them and been using them. Thankfully, not in an accident. But it's one of those things I'm like, I wonder if you can, like, make it out or if you can see people's license plate or... So I told my son, I'm like, pull the little chip thing out of there. It's like a memory card like you'd have in a in a phone or in a camera. And I said, pull that out because I'd like to see, you know, how it does. And uh, I guess it takes, like, five-minute increments. So it'll do five minutes, it'll go on, it'll do another five minutes, another five minutes. It does, like maybe 20 of those and then it goes back to the beginning and then it starts recording over them so if you have an accident or something it's going to be on there so i told my son i wanted to see a specific incident so he's looking through all these clips little did i know there's <laughs> i'm afraid to hear this <laughs> there's it records you talking or <laughs> singing or anything while you're in there. Yeah. So I he took it upstairs, and then I said, I'll be up in a few minutes. So I came up, and he's looking at me, and he's just shaking his head. And I'm like, what? And he says, you really do talk to yourself when no one's in the car. And I go, why? What do you mean? And he goes, well, I've been listening through these clips, and I hear you singing, and I hear you talking back to the, raid, the guy on the radio. <laughs> And I hear you talking about what your plans are later. And he goes, and I know I wasn't in the car. So I knew you're just talking to yourself. And I'm like, yeah, I told you I do that. And he goes, I, I, I kind of didn't comprehend oh how bad it was. I told my son the other day, I'm like, you know, I, I do things. Well, he bought that lamp for me, that awesome lamp. And I went in the room the other day to do something. And I went, oh, wait a minute. I'm buying by myself. I think I'm going to turn my lamp on. Just like my son bought me a beautiful, beautiful, um, it's cast iron lamp that is a um, uh, flamingo. Flamingo, thank you. I couldn't get it out. But it was white, and I'm like, I really wanted a pink flamingo. Then he saw it lit up at the store, and, and when it comes on, the inside of the lampshade is pink. So when you turn it on, it, makes it the casts pink. everything pink. That's yes, so cool. it's cool. So my sweet little boy, well, he's not so little anymore, <laughs> but my sweet boy bought that for me. So I have it sitting in the other room that I'm getting ready to paint and move into. So I went in there, and I'm like, I'm going to turn this lamp on. So I turned it on, and I'm bent over because it's on a small stool in there because it wasn't no place else to set it at the moment. And and it's right in front of a mirror. <laughs> oh, no. So, I, you know, I turned it on, and I just kind of lifted my head. I'm still bent over, and I lift my head up, and I'm looking in the mirror, and I'm grinning like an idiot. <laughs> like, oh, this is so cool. Oh, and I'm standing there talking like that to myself. This is so cool. <laughs> and then I realize what you're doing, and it's like, if anybody really could get in my head, I'd be so scary. <laughs> I know. I know. I'm such a scary person. If we had therapy, our therapist would need a therapist. Hey, you got to look at it this way. That's what's kept us sane all this time is being able to express ourselves. Yeah. But <laughs> I'm, like, I'm always, I always talk to myself, yeah, I got to do this. And then, uh, oh, and then I got to mm -hmm. make sure, I, you know, I Me just, too. I do that. And sometimes I'll be talking to my son and I'll say, did you hear what I said? Or I asked you something and he'll say, no, I wasn't listening. At least he's honest. And he goes, I wasn't know if you were talking to yourself or you are talking to me. Yeah, I know, I know. So, okay. Well, on that note, we're going to wrap it up. We will... Uh, oh, but it's so much fun. Well, we'll keep talking okay. after I turn the microphone off. <laughs> oh, you guys are going to miss so much. Uh. 
You'll miss nothing, oh, believe yeah. me. So okay. that is all. We will see you next time. Please leave a comment down below. If you have a question, we're going to be doing a question uh, uh, one very soon. And if you don't want to leave a question below, you can email me, jen at pudgypicker.com, and leave me your question there. And say, I'd rather not have my name, but I mention, but I do have a question. So send that to me. Uh, please subscribe on this channel. I also do lots of garage sale hauls and thrift sale hauls and booth tours and all kinds of other fun stuff. So subscribe, and when you hit the subscribe button, a little bell will show up. And if you click on that, you will get notifications when I ding, ding. yep when I post something, so you can immediately come over and and view it first. Won't miss a thing. Yes, and also you can follow me on Twitter under the Pudgy Picker. And that is all. So we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.